I'm going to try to win the Edmonton Oilers the Stanley Cup. Except there's one problem. Every player's speed stat now replicates their jersey number. So Leon Dreisaitl, it's not a good look for you, my guy. But don't worry, because after every single win, I'm allowed to return one forward and one defenseman back to their original speed. But it's not going to be easy for us, because we're already in the playoffs, and we have to take on the LA Kings. And by having to reduce everyone's speed stat, we can't even compete with the LA Kings. Our offense is now with 77, while our defense, that's a 71. Luckily, Stuart Skinner can still at least hold it down in between the pipes for us. But I'm not even sure if Stuart Skinner is going to be able to save us because outside of three players right now this team can't even skate but there is one guy that can skate and he's got a ton of wheels Connor mcdavid we're going to be feeding him the puck a ton in this video and he's getting a great opportunity right here to score but corpus is making the massive save but the biggest issue that we're having right now is we can't break the puck out of the defensive zone because nobody can even get out of the defensive zone everyone's just way too slow right now but luckily we have guys on our team like number 91 evander kane he's going to turn on the jets getting past the defense and he's getting a great opportunity trying to go short side we're going to have to rely on him a ton in this video but for for now we're gonna have to hope our defense can hold up and right now it's not looking good la's getting countless good opportunities but Stuart skinner he's making huge saves to keep us in this one and speaking of players making big saves ryan mcleod's gonna be picking up a loose puck he's gonna have a wide open net but corpusell he's gonna be able to go post to post quick enough and he's making another fantastic save and with both of these goaltenders standing on their heads after 20 minutes we're gonna be deadlocked zero to zero and considering our team basically can't skate right now i'll take that as a win but it was only a matter of time before someone would be able to get on the board and of course that's gonna be 97 speed car mcd David turning on the Jets. He's going to beat Corpus Allo and he's picking up our first goal of the game. But that lead's not going to be lasting too long because shout out to Evan Bouchard for playing absolutely no defense. Kevin Fiel is going to be wide open on the doorstep and he's going to even this game up just a minute later. And just 90 seconds after that goal, it's getting worse for the Edmonton Oilers as Gavrikov's going to be able to pick up another one and LA's now got themselves a 2 1 lead. The only thing saving this team right now is the fact that Stuart Skinner's wearing the jersey number 74, so he's still quick enough to go post to post and he's keeping us in this game. Although Stuart Skinner's going to be keeping the puck out of our net, we got to find a way to get the puck into their net and that's when ryan nugent hopkins is going to take over he's fighting off countless defenders before getting a shot off right on the goal line i have absolutely no clue how he's gained this over the shoulder of corpusello but he is that's a goal for us and this game's all evened up and that greasy goal from the nuge is going to be the last one of the second period so we're entering the final 20 minutes in a tie game in a challenge like this you have to rely on your stars to carry the way and that's exactly what 97 speed car mcdavid's doing driving to the front of the net he's going to find nugent hopkins crashing as well he's going to set him up for the one timer nuge is giving us the one goal lead and now the Edmonton Oilers are rolling. And just 20 seconds later, it doesn't look like the Edmonton Oilers are done because who's going to be carrying the way once again? Well, that's number 97, Connor McDavid, giving us a two goal lead. And I think this game might be all wrapped up. And in the final seconds of this game, I don't know what I was thinking here, but you know what? Let's get a bit risky. Let's go for the Stuart Skinner empty net goal. It's not going to happen, but if he did score a goal there, nah, we would have been adding extra players to our team. That's a fact. Although Stuart Skinner wasn't able to pick up that goalie goal there, we're still going to find a way to come out on top four to two, and we're off to the next round. And the next round, it actually might be an easier matchup than I was expecting as the Vegas Golden Knights are going to be getting upset to the Winnipeg Jets 4-0, and that's who we're going to be taking on. With that massive win, we can return two players' speed stats back to their original, and one of them, of course, has to be Leon Dreisaitl, and he's back to an 89 speed. While Matias Ackholm, he's going to be the first defenseman I'm upgrading, and he's back up to an 85. The upgrades for the Edmonton Oilers, of course, are going to be helping us a ton, but I'm not sure if they're helping us enough, because looking at this Winnipeg Jets team, they're literally better in every single category. Offense, defense, goaltending... No, I don't think this one's going to be as easy as I was expecting. Based on how the first shift is going, and with Connor Halbuck making saves like this, yeah, it's going to take a miracle for us to get past Winnipeg. Luckily, there is a miracle on our team, and he goes by the name of Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He's going to be poking the puck away from Pion here, and he's springing for a breakaway. He's going to fake a shot before going to the backhand, tucking it past Connor Halbuck, and Edmonton's getting on the board early. And right after that goal, Leon Jossel is going to be jumping on the ice, so we might as well see him turn on the Jets. He's going to split right in between two defenders, ripping another one past Halbuck, and that's two goals in one. 20 seconds for us yeah it looks like the Edmonton Oilers are taking over a couple seconds ago I called Ryan Nugent Hopkins the miracle but I don't think he's the true miracle of this team I think it's Nick Bugstad out of all players because somehow at 72 speed he's gonna work his way in between multiple defenders he's gonna beat Connor Halbuck and we have a 3-0 lead now how is 72 speed Nick Bugstad getting past people it just don't make sense meanwhile what's been going on in the defensive zone not too much other than Stuart Skinner making saves like this to keep our 3-0 lead and things are gonna keep on going right for the Edmonton Oilers and they're gonna hold on to that 3-0 lead entering the first intermission but right after that intermission we're immediately going to be giving up great opportunities Kyle Connor's going to have a breakaway but who's going to be standing on his head once again none other than Stuart Skinner we already knew that one so this right here is just plain robbery Ryan Nugent Hopkins is going to drive towards the front of the net and Connor Halbuck he's going to make the casual save right well that's what I thought too until I went into the instant replay because something didn't look right here that's in the back of the net I don't care what you say that's across the red line 
I see a bit of white there. That's a fair goal. Also, we've seen enough offense in this video. We've seen a ton of great defense. I want to see some physicality. So Leon Dreisaitl, why not light somebody up? Halfway through the second period, I think we all knew it was only a matter of time before the defense broke down for our team. And Mesa Appleton, he's going to find a way to beat Stuart Skinner. And he's making this a two goal game. The Jets and Oilers are going to be going back and forth for the rest of the period, but no one's going to be able to find the back of the net again. So we're entering the second intermission with the Edmonton Oilers having a 3-1 lead. But a 3-1 lead isn't enough for me. So Leon Dreisaitl, you got those wheels. I want you to show me them again. But instead of you scoring the goal, you're going to find a wide open Evander Kane, 91 speed. He's going to put this one in the back of the net. And I think it's safe to say this game's all wrapped up or it would be all wrapped up. You cannot convince me this isn't a trip right here. The way my man's is going down right there, that's definitely a trip. And although we have a bunch of guys out here that don't have any speed whatsoever, you got to give shouts to guys like Warren Fogle who are going to be blocking pucks here. You guys can't skate. You can't do anything else right now. So you might as well block some shots. And you know who's another man we got to shout out? Stuart Skinner. Because with this man making saves like this, there's no way the Winnipeg Jets are going to be able to beat us. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Edmonton's going to be able to hold off for the rest of this game. And we're going to be taking it in a 4-2 victory. So that means we got two more players getting upgrades. And we're also off to the conference finals. But in the conference finals, it looks like we're going to keep on seeing upsets. Because the Colorado Avalanche are going to be falling 3-1 to the Minnesota Wild. So we're taking on Minnesota. Real talk. Shout out to Minnesota for holding it down. Because I do not think there was any chance we were beating the Colorado Avalanche. I'm just going to keep it a 1,000. So clearly, we got to fix Darnell Nurse's speed. He's one of our top defensemen here. He's getting a ton of minutes. And I can't have him at 25 speed. It's just not going to work here. And the next guy I'm going to be upgrading here probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Matthias Janmark. I don't know why, but this man seems to be getting the puck constantly during these games. So I better upgrade his speed. So we already know who we're going to be taking on the conference finals. That's going to be the Minnesota Wild. Once again, they're better than us in every single category, but we've got a bit of speed back on this team. And now that we have another two additional players able to turn on the Jets, I think Minnesota better be scared of us. But what am I really saying here? Our bottom six can't skate and half of our defense can't skate. I think I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here, but maybe I wasn't because on the very first shift in the first 20 seconds, who's turning on the Jets and getting a great opportunity? Connor McDavid. I'm just gonna keep it a thousand. I don't care how many players speed we upgrade. Connor McDavid's always the number one option and that's never changing. However, there's one thing that speed can't fix, player IQ. And I'm showing that at full display here as we're giving up a fantastic chance to Kirill Kaprizov and he's picking up the first goal of the game. Giving up a goal this early in the game is definitely not ideal for what we're trying to do here. Here. So how are we going to get back? Ryan Nugent Hopkins is going to draw a penalty and that means we're going to work. And in order to score this goal, we have to give a massive shout to Darnell Nurse, who's going to be taking an absolute monster hit. But what's that monster hit going to lead to? Evander Kane somehow scoring this goal. Don't ask me how it ended up in the back of the net. A goal is a goal and we're going to run with it. But Evander Kane, I'm going to let you know right now, just because you scored a goal doesn't mean you can do something this stupid. You literally skated from one end of the ice to the other to make this hit. What are you doing, my guy? We can't have that. But maybe Evander Kane was up to something because on the penalty kill, Ekholm's going to dish over to Yanmark and Mark andre Fleury is making this save. I don't really know what was going on here. That was the weirdest save animation I've ever seen in my life, but he's keeping this game tied up. But somehow, halfway through the first period, five speed Cody Cece is going to be able to break by somebody. He's going to send it over to Derek Ryan and 10 speed Derek Ryan's going to snipe this one past the goaltender. We've got a 2-1 lead and we're not done there because just four minutes after that with Darnell Nurse's newfound speed, he's going to bring the puck into the offensive zone. He's going to find 21 speed Clem Costin. He's going to bury this one and we might have this game all wrapped. Up. But before the period ends, we got Matias Ekholm and he's got some newfound speed. He's going to go to work weaving between all of these defenders before throwing the puck on net. And with the puck loose in front of the net, Bukestad's going to be able to bury this one with 1.9 seconds left in the period. And we have a commanding 4-1 lead entering the intermission. The offense is going to stop at the end of the first period though. It's going to keep on clicking and that's going to be led by Carmick McDavid. He's going to set up the one-timer for Ryan Nugent Hopkins, but Marc-Andre Fleury, he knows he's been letting his team down. So he's going to make another huge save. But literally a couple seconds after making that massive save, he Vander Kane has the puck in the offensive zone. He's going to throw a shot towards Flurry. He's not going to be able to handle it, and he's going to give up a massive rebound. And you already know Evander Kane with a wide open net. He's going to bury that one. It's 5-1. We might as well call it a game now. But there's one thing we have to remember about this game right here. I'm the guy controlling these players, and you already know I don't play defense. So now it's a 5-2 game. But although I can't play defense, I can definitely cook on offense. And Leon Dreisau, he's going to find a man wide open in front of the net. He's not going to be able to sneak a five hole on Flurry, but he is going to be able to secure it behind the net. He's going to wrap around and then find Leon Dreisau on the doorstep. Dreisau is going to have a wide open net for an easy goal. And now it's 6-2 and we've regained that four goal lead. But four goals just might not be enough for me. And early in the third period, Carmen McDavid's going to break the puck out to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He's going to get himself a breakaway. And based on how this game has been going, we already know the result of what's about to happen here. That's another goal for the Edmonton Oilers. Not but real talk, this is actually starting to get out of hand. 
It's a 7-2 game right now. We're shorthanded. Nugent Hopkins is going to steal the puck away and he's going to rip a top shelf. 8-2. Minnesota would eventually be able to do something. They would pick up one more goal here by Kirill Kaprizov. So now they're only losing 8-3. I don't think that really changes anything. We're still winning, but at least it's 8-3 and not 8-2. But who really cares? We're taking the conference finals. We're off to the Stanley Cup final. And who are we matching up against? It's either the Tampa Bay Lightning or the New Jersey Devils. No matter who we take on, it's going to be a tough matchup. But just look at our team right here. Derek Ryan Ryan played four minutes and 53 seconds, but yet in that time, he was able to pick up one goal and one assist. There was only a handful of players that didn't pick up points in this game. But now it's time to prepare ourselves for the Stanley Cup final. After a massive 4-2 win in the conference finals, we're going to have to take on the New Jersey Devils. Obviously, New Jersey proved themselves in the regular season. They proved that they can compete with the best in the league. And now it's time to play one of the best in Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Before we get into our Stanley Cup final, though, i got to give some upgrades to our team here. Evan Bouchard, you're going to be returning to an 85 speed, while Warren Fogel out of all players, I'm returning you to an 85. You're similar to the Matthias Janmark where you seem to have the puck all the time but can never do anything with it because you're too slow. And here we are in the Stanley Cup final. Although the New Jersey Devils are better than us across the board, we've got a bunch of players on this team back to their regular speed stats and now we're ready to compete with the best in the league. Now I'm going to keep it a thousand with you guys. Superstar difficulty, full sim style, and I still have players on my team that can't skate. So we're taking goals here by any means possible and that includes greasy wraparounds like this that are going to allow Evander Kane to have a wide open net. I'm not a proud person. A goal is a goal around here. But I can tell you after a goal like Evander Kane's, I definitely wasn't expecting this to happen. Matthias Ekholm's going to be picking up the loose puck and somehow he's able to get past the defense. He's going to find a way to get this puck past Vanacek and now we have ourselves a 2-0 lead. But as we know, eventually good things have to come to an end, but they're not coming to an end yet because Stuart Skinner, he's still going to keep on making saves like this. I don't know what's going on with this man, but he's locked in right now. With five minutes left in the third period, a great defensive play is going to spring Leon Drysaw for a breakaway but this time he's not gonna be able to find the back of the net and this is staying at a 2-0 game and just a couple seconds after that the two speedsters are looking to work some magic together Connor McDavid and Nugent Hopkins are trying to do the give and go but it looks like Vanacek's gonna be able to make the stop here now this sequence right here I can't really explain what happens New Jersey's gonna get on puck on net and Stuart Skinner's gonna make the save here we're gonna put saves in quotation marks because I don't really know what this is technically it's not a goal but we know darn well the puck's past the goal line but hey I'm gonna take what we get around here we're entering the first intermission with a 2-0 lead. Should we have a 2-0 lead? Absolutely not, but we're going to take it. But you know what? I felt guilty for the NHL not giving the New Jersey Devils that goal. So Stuart Skinner, you might as well dish this one right over to Jesper Bratt and allow him to score a goal. Yeah, you know what? I just felt like giving back to the Devils and definitely did not mean to turn that over. And Stuart Skinner, I guess you shouldn't have done that because now we give New Jersey all the momentum and it's a tie game 2-2 a minute 30 into the second period. Yeah, it's not a good look for this team right now. But somehow I think we influenced the New Jersey Devils in our style of not playing defense because they're going to do the exact same thing in Connor McDavid. He's given us a 3-2 lead. There's been three goals scored in the past two minutes here. Defense has just become non-existent out here. So I got to take a massive shot at my guy Clem Costin here, a former St. Louis Blues player. I understand you have 36 speed, but what happened to your hands? How are you not controlling this pass? That just doesn't make sense. But anyways, we're just going to move on from stone hands, Clem Costin, and Leon Dreisau, you have some fantastic hands, so let's watch you work your way towards the front of the net. A nice backhand is going to give Ryan McLeod a wide open net here, and he's going to bury that one, and we've got ourselves a 4-2 lead as long as we can hold on to it and you know for a fact around here that's exactly what's not going to happen because I can't play defense well it's not I can't play defense I choose to not play defense we play risky out here and it's going to backfire for us Nico Heesh is going to bury one in the back of the net and it's a 4-3 game now in the early stages of the third period there's been one man we've been relying on this entire game 97 overall 97 speed Connor McDavid he's going to get a bit of a breakaway here he's not going to be able to get it past Vanacek but you already know the Edmonton Oilers offense is not going to be stopping here because just three minutes after that great opportunity Evan Bouchard's going to tee one up he's just slightly wide of the net like maybe an inch or two I just got to keep it one scundo with you my guy how are you that wide of the net eventually Evander Kane's going to score a goal here and he's really carrying the way for us but bro how did you miss the net by that much you literally missed by like eight feet with the way I've been playing defense this game you already know that Evander Kane insurance goal is definitely going to be coming in handy because what's going to be happening a couple minutes later Jesper Bratt's going to be found wide open in the slot and he's going to bury this one past Stuart Skinner. In the final seconds of this game, we have to play high IQ hockey. We just got to be smart out here. And you cannot convince me this is not a dive. I understand I tripped him, but look at that diving animation. No, nah, we got screwed by the refs here. So with the net pulled the New Jersey on the power play, they have all the momentum and by rights, they should even up this game. But who's going to be scoring from our own zone, 200 feet away from the opponent's net? The man that literally couldn't hit the net in the offensive zone and shot it eight feet wide, Evan Bouchard. He's given us the insurance goal. It's 
it's six to four and you might as well give us the stanley cup now and with time winding down you already know what's happening the edmonton oilers are stanley cup champions we just won a stanley cup when half of our team literally couldn't skate up and down the ice 